Uh, my name is Professor Tawana Kupi. I'm the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria in Pretoria in South Africa. It's a large institution. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi A14. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. So last year we created a center for the future of work. Uh, and the reason why we created a center for the future of work is that we understood that uh, what te- digital technologies have done is to disrupt the world as we know it, and also to disrupt multiple industries, including even the media industry. Podcasts, uh, for example, what we're using right now, never used to exist. You had radio, television, newspapers, magazines, but now you have multiple platforms that can be controlled by and run by individuals like yourself, and which are also influential and garner a lot of audiences. That means, for example, just the journalistic profession itself has changed uh, in multiple ways. And also, if you look at how information can be presented now, newspapers can be presented in an online platform where audio is embedded and where visuals are embedded. So the old division between print a, 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 a voice media like radio and so on and print media has now been has now been if you like disrupted and dissolved and something new has come into it and you can go on there's artificial intelligence now there's machine learning now and with artificial intelligence and robotics robots can do the work that human beings do at the University of Pretoria for example we have four such employees we have a woman called Libby who works in our library and she can answer questions to staff and students doing research. She can tell you who I am. We have a smart hoof, a, a dog, a robot dog in one of, in, at our engineering 4.0 lab. And smart hoof can do a lot of things. He can carry drones and a lot of other electronic equipment and test the condition of roads, rail lines, go into an orchard and count the number of trees, take pictures of whether the fruits or the plants are actually being invaded by diseases and all of that. We have a, a Stevie who works with doctors at the side of a patient between our, our doctors here in South Africa and doctors in Germany. And then they can share and do a diagnosis of a patient sharing data on the screen of the, of the, of the robot. Then we have an online uh, counseling a tool for students with mental problems called Scooby. So, so, so that means now I have a category of employees that I didn't have before who do some of the work that human beings used to do for me, right? And so that, that if you like that, uh, that is the, the future of work using digital technologies to either replace human beings or to work together with human beings. Our approach at the Investor of Pretoria is a complementarity between digital use of digital technologies, use of robotics, artificial intelligence, and all of that to work together with human beings because you still do. This is the interesting thing about the future of work. The human touch or personal human contact is very important in directing these technologies to what uh, they should do in the human sphere is important. So what, what, looking at all of that, we then say it, it means even our curriculum at the university must change now to anticipate the changes that are working in the that are happening in the world of work. Otherwise, you run the risk of where your students go into the employment market and their skills and their knowledge is actually obsolete. And so and we 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 we're not just talking the talk. We are as I've given you an example of four employees who are actually machines using artificial intelligence and all of those things are actually working for us. So we thought with the working group, we thought, and then we said, let's create a center to research what is happening. And this center must work both with the university and work with the both companies in the private, the public and civil society sector. And now we are actually doing that. But before we did that, we had the fortune that the Nobel Committee in Sweden, uh, they ran something called Nobel Media. It provides Nobel Prize winners to do dialogues on a chosen topics around continents in the world. They'd never done it in Africa. So I went to Sweden and I agreed with them that we'll do it for the first time in Africa in 2021. But COVID struck, but we still did it using online platforms like this. 
And here is, is the advantage of uh, uh, digital technologies. Instead of one Nobel Prize winner, which is what they normally do with five Nobel Prize winners, teaching across from different continents, from Australia to the US, right? And do you know what topic? They say, choose the topic. I say, the future of work. So with economists, physicists, engineers, Nobel Peace Prize winners. And, and I said, I'm creating, the day after this dialogue, we are launching our center. Can you advise us? We believe that everyone has a story to share. We believe in the power of storytelling in today's digital economy. Yes, we believe that our audience needs to be touched at the level of emotion so we can better engage. What about you? Do you believe in storytelling as much as we do? Do you want to reach the hearts and minds of your audience? Then join us in our online training class, Storytelling for Content Creators and Digital Entrepreneurs. Come, come to obehiawonefoodcom slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skills so you can earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. Storytelling is a powerful instrument at our disposal. Let's explore it together. See you in the class. And so apart from, from that advice and what we did, what we, we, what we had been doing ourselves, we're now creating a research center that does both academic research that does research to inform how, how our curriculum should change and how we should educate and train our students. Third, that does consultancy uh, with the uh, private companies. I'll give you a few examples just in a short while. The center also you know, does advocacy around how should human resource policies, regulations, and practices change given that through COVID, we were lucky also COVID happened. If one can say COVID is luck, it was devastating. But lucky in quotation marks in the sense that COVID pushed many things online, including how people work. We all live in, we're teaching online, working online, working from home. And now, as you know, around the world, people are now actually not returned to the office in some instances, or now work partially in the office and partially at home. So that COVID showed that that is possible. Again, it showed us how work is changing. And because there are many companies, like especially you know the auditing firms and others, and, and, and law firms and others, and even banks, people do not work at the office all of the time. They can work from home using digital platforms like Zoom, Teams, you know, all of those, uh, all, all of these new platforms that have come into being. So really, I think that is it's what we have done to create the center of the future of work is very inspired at the University of Pretoria because it anticipates developments in society driven by technology. It also anticipates new trends, but it uses research to back it up. So having praised all of these digital platforms, we are conscious of one thing, that going all online, all digital is not necessarily appropriate for everything or good for everything. So for example, our students have wanted very much to come back and have some physical contact classes. Because remember studying at a university or even going to work, is not about just doing your work. It's about the interaction you have with your fellow work colleagues or your fellow students. It's about the networks and the bonds that you make. It's about other skills that you get that you won't get simply by working on your own and or studying on your own. And what are these skills? Collaboration, appreciation, cultural diversity, debating, dialoguing, working in teams together, understanding you know, communication and body language and being in person and also just being social. Human beings are social animals. So, so our Center for the Future of Work is doing very intelligent research to see how to strike the balance between where you just use technology or people work alone or study alone. And how do you actually mix the two in an intelligent combination that gets you the best of the world? We're also going to be trying to find out, do these situations now create an opportunity for two things, work-life balance, because you can work from home and work from the office. And if you work from home, that means you are closer to children, your partners and others. And also, you know, you can work at different points depending on your work. Second, also, is it an opportunity to develop lifelong learning? 
if some jobs are going to be obsolete, should the universities not create programs where people whose jobs are now taken over by machines completely can come and retrain to do other things? And also should it, uh, education, university education not prepare you for changes that might happen in the world of work? So let me please stop here and, and, and perhaps you have some questions, but I think I've sketched out for you why we believe, uh, why I believe that I think the topic you, uh, you originally wanted to ask me is very, very much aligned uh, to what we are doing with the future of work. And I can talk a little more about the companies we are working. Uh, I can see that there is actually a lot to cover here. That is why I was saying before that uh, mm -hmm. the, the time is going to be our worst enemy here, but let's see how we manage with that. Uh, yeah. Now, I remember, for example, uh, in 2010, when this podcast was just recently new. So we spent an entire year talking about soft ski. Because soft skills are going to be very important in the future work as we are going forward. Because, like you just explained, uh, most of the things that we used to do in uh, in a closed place where people are just packed together, uh, we call it offices where we are working, uh, it moved from there now to maybe some place where you are going to be interacting, using technology and all that. And mm -hmm. when you were together in one place, okay, certain skill, maybe you don't know how to do, you can easily uh, liaise on some, or some other persons who know how to uh, maybe perform these skills. But when you are alone, now you're going to have to do everything yourself in most of the cases. So it becomes very important then to be able to do it and also show that you know how to do it and you are able to demonstrate what you have done. So you are going to need all skills now. So yes. this is where I want you to speak more on, which is the importance of soft skill in the future work. Yeah. So yes, yeah. I think that we might even move away from the use of the term soft skills in the future of work or how or, or work of the future is that we we now discover that without uh, what you just uh, traditionally call soft skills you actually not work do not work in the best way possible if you like and i think you hinted at some of those things emotional intelligence can only happen if you are in this interacting with other people valuing cultural diversity is you can only happen you can only gain that skill of valuing cultural diversity in a way that is globalizing. Many countries around the world, even when they complain about illegal immigration and all of that, are getting more and more diverse, right? So appreciating that other people have different points of view, they come from different backgrounds, come from different faiths and all of those things can only happen if you interact with them in space. It can happen also technologically, but you don't see much. What you see is, have a body or a bit of a head. And people online these days often have meetings and things where these, the cameras are off. You don't see anyone. You could as well be talking to a machine. So collaboration, engaging, uh, uh, negotiating, emotional intelligence, culture, appreciating cultural diversity, uh, 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 and, and all of those things. Those kinds and communication skills, critical thinking, thinking outside the box. You can only do it, you know, when you engage with other people and you engage with them in different kind of forms or spaces. So I think that, you know, the, the future is soft skills uh, enabled by, supported and complemented by use of digital technologies and the multiplicity of such technologies. So the human in us actually, contrary to some of the, the, the doomsday scenarios, or if you plan properly, don't just use robotics, artificial intelligence to push out human beings. After all, humans create technology in order to create a better life for themselves. So harness the technology to be able to actually do those things. That way, sometimes we're not necessarily possible. You know, the, 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 the on contact things always, we didn't always appreciate certain things because they were always there, right? We were interacting, we were talking to each other, we were in each other's presence, and we took it for granted, right? But now that we can see that technology can separate us and we can be in our way, we begin to miss certain of those things that are a, a key to social interaction, to our, our sense of being human beings and our ability to do many things together. In my job, for example, we I spoke, you have to travel quite a lot and, and have collaborations with others. We did a lot during COVID, but it was not the same. This year, for example, I'm traveling a lot physically. Because people actually invite me and say, this is going to be an in-person meeting. You have to come to the meeting. You can't just do it uh, online. Or sometimes we do it hybrid. We can say, yes, those of you who want to be online is fine. 
those who want to come in person and be there. So we're able to mix things uh, uh, and combine things in very interesting ways now. Uh, 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 and that I think that uh, will enable us to do things in a much better way. Now, I'm also looking at um, the future work now, like a kind of a return to how it has been before. Because mm -hmm. uh, before the industrial revolution, uh, uh, work were not actually regulated by a lot of this rule that we have today where maybe somebody go to education, you go to school, then you finish, you need to work for 40 years after that, you retire. There were these uh, kind of, maybe I don't want to say the, the way that uh, the, the lion go to hunt, no? In that the society is configured in a way that in a typical African society, let me just put it like that, you, are, you cannot be jobless. You always have yeah. something to do. As you are okay. growing up, you, you fit in to the society because you yeah. have a role to play yeah. in that it is more like a kind of contracting this yeah. role that you know that you are going to do you are going to do it uh, to somebody who is going to exchange value for you so you yeah. didn't need to be actually employed by somebody you are working mm -hmm. for yourself but you are rendering a service so yeah. I, I don't know if you want to uh expand on that if that is related to where we are actually going in terms of future work which is different from the industrial complexes where somebody own everything, you are paying salary to people. Help me yeah, with that. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think that uh, one of the things that uh, the feature of work enables is that work is not working for somebody. It is a range of entrepreneurial activities in the manner in which you in, in, intimate. And, 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 and therefore, you are this flexibility, an important element enters the space again, which is similar to what you were talking about. You could, you could work for somebody for part of your time or work with somebody for part of your time, but work for yourself for part of that time, but precisely because that flexibility is now, is now there using uh, multiple platforms and technologies. And therefore lifelong learning, lifelong work becomes very, very important. You are less a prisoner of a system now, and now more, more if you have multiple pathways towards finding sustainable livelihoods. And you can chop and change different types. So our Center for the Future of Work also has an LA program on entrepreneurship, which we are teaching our students. We've created a free online course for our students. We have a ready for work program. We have a free entrepreneurship course. Then we have the things that are coming out of our Center for the Future of Work. The center is also like, for example, doing research for us to say, should everybody at the university be working at the office all of the time? We want to go to do what we are, you are just loosely calling now flexi work. Where two days you work from home, uh, two days you come from the office or something of the sort. In a five day period, things could change. But also with the capability of you not having to travel to work all of the time, you have more free time on your hand, if you like, or relaxation time or time you can use to run a business on your side, you know, do whatever you actually, in a sense, uh, want to do as long as you deliver on the work. And for the two days, you must be in the office for teamwork and all of that, you are there. To be a great content creator in today's fast changing economy, you need one thing, storytelling. Storytelling is a powerful instrument to leverage, either for personal use or for your business success. This is why this training class, Storytelling for Content Creator and Digital Entrepreneurs, was created. It is designed to help you leverage the power of storytelling so you can stand out from the crowd and earn more in your business. Come to obehiair14.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skill to earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. You need the power of storytelling to stand out in the competition. So let's explore it together. See you in the class. So I think it makes uh, uh, what you're asking then really becomes possible now. There are many different, in the future of work or work of the future, there are many different ways of doing work, not only one way. And also work is not being an employee. It could be being an employer yourself, uh, employed by yourself, or even employing other people, even though part of the time you are also employed yourself. All right, thank you for that. Now, in terms of how the society is structured, I think is everything is relating to the type of the work that we also do because 
everybody in the morning you wake up you are going to the work in the typical classic world that we have known in our generations no or a few years before now and also now that like you go to school then you're going to go to work you have the uh, the, the transit system and all the ticketing and all that uh, mm. these are be part of the system but mm. if the work if the, the future work is going to be maybe slightly different from that where you are going to be working from home is this going to affect the structure that we have today or are we going to build different structures? Because you didn't make mention of uh, AI before. Technology is going to be uh, playing a lot. Of course, I'm going to ask you about technology late after this one. So uh, because most people are going to be working from home, like for example, like me, I'm working from home. From here, I connect to any person I want to interview anywhere in the world, Canada, US, UK, Nigeria, South Africa. It is very easy for me. It's very easy. I don't need to go anywhere to do that. So is this kind of work going to affect the system, the city, the, uh, the, uh, the transit system? Uh, of course, the internet usage is going to be very highly important here. But I want to see how, if this is going to affect the way we structure our society. Yeah, absolutely. We need the infrastructure. The technologies need to be available. And also, they are not available equitably across all societies. And we're still in Africa. So future public investment must be in the technology platforms and technology backbones, ensuring the internet is, is accessible, affordable to everyone who needs to use it. Then what it will do, as you say, is it will cause a change, a disruption in other systems, particularly transport systems. You might not have the large volumes all of the time that you find in public transportation, people driving private cars, which might help with them addressing issues of environmental uh, environmental pollution, for example. So to answer your question uh, more, more directly, because we, we now have, for this session, we now have to end soon uh, as I start my next meeting. To answer your question directly, is rapidly advancing digital technologies are going to alter the way in which we have known life and organized life and affect other industries, transport industry, the real estate industry of office blocks and offices. There are many offices now around the world lie empty because people are largely working from home. So what is going to happen to that industry? So, so at the university, I can tell you what we're doing. We are repurposing some of the big lectures into social learning spaces that are Wi-Fi connected, but people have, there's a coffee shop at the end but students can sit on the floor, sit on tables, sit in corners, sit in enclosed spaces for group work and so on. So, 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 so that, that, that is also going in a, in a sense to change. Also, the airline industry, with the capability of people to have meetings and conferences, even online, not everybody needs to be flying around now. So that industry might also actually, actually if you like, change. Software industry, technology, a devices, digital devices industry might find that it is growing. It is a net gainer in this because people need those gadgets as their primary working tools. So, so it's, it's some degree of, a, I would say a revolution, but it's, change, it's, 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 it's rapid change that is coming our way, but that needs to be managed in a particular way. So especially for Africa, that nobody is left behind. Not everybody in Africa has even electricity, computers, internet connection and all of that. Yet everything is changing uh, uh, around them. So, so it's a, we need new leaders and uh, new leaders with new vision, new entrepreneurs, new economies even, yeah. So, so thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, we should continue this conversation another time. Yeah. Certainly we have to do that. So I thank you so much for, for the time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't exploit that, no, but I assure you, you can give me another time again so we can talk. We could have a lot of questions to ask you related to even the aspect of technology. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehe podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehe Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.